Hi, it's Uncle Gnarly, and today we're going to do another little TRA-S quote-unquote tutorial. Today I will be talking about how to integrate the TRA-S with the Eurorack system. And more specifically, we'll be using plaques, or plates, or plaques. I think it's plaques, but whatever you want to say. We're integrating it together with a great drum machine. And although with Eurorack, there are so many different variations of how you can do things to come up with cool stuff, I'm gonna be doing something very minimal and kind of just using two LFOs, um, two malts, and plaques. We'll start off with the TR-8S setup and how I have everything going over there. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm running an assignable out over to my Eurorack. And the reason I'm using an assignable out is because, as we kind of type things in here, as you can see, when the fader's down, it's muted. It's not sending anything. Uh, with the trigger out over here, it doesn't work like that. So as you see, I can move the fader up. And now it's triggering. Another cool thing about this is that you can use uh, a last step, as I already have it on. Again, you can't really do that with a trigger. I, I, I think the main reason is because that's really supposed to be meant uh, to be used as either a clock or with some of Roland's boutique stuff or their smaller stuff like the SEO2, the SH101 that have their own sequencers. So you can use that to sequence and restart a sequence on that kind of outboard gear. And then it's all clocked in without using MIDI, which can get kind of confusing sometimes. But I think it's essentially what it's used for. Now, I'm, I'm also going to use the trigger outs, and I'll get more into that um, what, in, once I get to the Eurorack part. But... Just for now, I am going to use that, but it's more of to add some extra um, kind of rhythm to the flats. But right now, just know that we're gonna use the assignable loud. And with the tr 8 s you have six assignable outs. So if you're using a full Eurorack system with a bunch of different oscillators, uh, drums, samplers, whatever, you can use six different channels here to trigger those things, which I think is one of the best things about the tr 8 s It's one of the reasons why I bought a tr 8 s is so I can include a Eurorack with it. Now, unfortunately, the or fortunately, depending on what your use for them is, the TR-8S assignable outs are all quarter inch, so you will need quarter inch to eighth inch adapters. Um, but they're not super expensive. I had one on hand, so that's why I'm using it. The trigger out, however, is an eighth inch. So just in case you're unfamiliar, how you set up an assignable out on one of the instrument tracks is you go to Shift, Kit, puts you into Edit Mode, um, you're going to skip around to the output out here, press enter, and choose. As you can see, the hi-hat time, or the hi-tom, 
I have changed to assignable out six. You can do whatever you want. Mix is the main. And there you go. Very easy, very simple. And then the only other thing is that I'm having my Euro rack come back into the TR8S right up here through the extension in. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like how the TR8S kind of mixes everything together. And then you can also do effects. Which of course is great, great fun. All right, but basically other than that, you're just kind of, you know, set in a drum beat around that. Um, and then I think it's time to move over to the Eurex side and see how everything's plugged in. All right. So right now I have that sequence going from the TR-8S. I kind of unplugged everything else and we just have the assignable out, which is the sequence going in to the trigger. Now, like I said, I wanted to do a very simple setup. Um, obviously, you can see the more your stuff you use, if you started doing more with peaks or ornaments in crime or maths or whatever modulation module you have, you can start getting really crazy and doing really cool stuff. But for the sake of doing things on a lower budget or a smaller setup, maybe you're just getting started, like you can see I kind of am, with two LFOs and plats, which is a very, both very common modules for people to have, um, you can get some really, really cool sounds. So basically, I have the LFO of channel one, going into a scope and the LFO of channel two going to another scope on Ornaments Crime, just so you can see what kind of LFOs I'm using for this. Um, channel one is a random LFO. Channel two is a step LFO. So those are basically both just going into malt right here. Um, that way I can use them for more than one thing. So here we go. Right now you can see Platts is uh, set to the hi-hat um, oscillator. And there's no movement right now. It's all set on one thing. You can kind of play with it, tweak it how you want it. But this seems to be a good place to start at. But we're going to take this random LFO, plug it into the timbre. Now you can hear it kind of get some more movement moving up and down. And at this point, you just start playing around. I already kind of did some stuff because it can get pretty insane. And I didn't want to make you guys have to watch that. But we're going to take that step up. You can see the morph is really starting to change it more and more. take another one of these randoms put it into the harmony and we're gonna take and now we're gonna get real fun and take the step up plug it into the model now this is where you're starting to hear some cool glitchy sounds as it moves through the different oscillators that Platts has um you, this is where you're getting kind of that cool little bass sound. And then for the last one, just to give it a little bit of more movement, plug another one of the randoms into the FM. It'll tweak the sound just a little bit. Now, start adding the kick drum in. And so you can hear that it's, when it's moving over to the, um, more the melodic, uh, oscillators it's very loud so this con this is where that trigger out comes in and basically it's triggering on the upbeat and what it will do it will quiet it will quiet the uh those melodic oscillators and it's going to 
give it a little bit of movement, but open it up a little bit on the up. You can hear that's much more controlled now. Take the kick drum out. And now this is where you can really start playing around. through the various models that they have and see what happens. I'll throw in some more steps here. stuff gets uh, pretty crazy. And then, you know, we can kind of change the frequencies around. Basically that's it. All you gotta do is play around and you can see if you start feeding those LFOs into attenuators or uh, you know various other bring in various other modulations uh, you can really get some crazy sounds and scope it to how you want to do it. I basically just want to do it in as small of modules as possible in a very simple setup but I have a video up if you want to check it out. I'll put it in a link in the description or right up in the corner. And you can check out what can really go on while using the uh, Eurorack. And I also am using a workstat um, by Moog. And I have that as kind of a running acid line. So there's just so much you can do with the TR-8S. And I really love it. And I'm going to buy a whole bunch of the quarter inch to eighth inch adapters and start plugging them in and see what you can really do with this machine. But this is a great start and you can you get the spontaneousness of Euro rack and include it with a drum machine and it just makes it so cool. And again, it's one of the reasons why I love the TR-8S. If you're thinking about buying one and you're watching videos, I hope that this puts you over the edge in one way or the another. I hope maybe you see this and you're like, this doesn't do what I want it to do. Or maybe you see and say, oh, this is way more than I want to do. Um, if I'm missing anything, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you about it. All right, thanks for checking it out.